hello and welcome i'm jonathan and for those of you that are just um, tuning in welcome to this channel or whatever platform that you'll be viewing this from i want to share with everyone who cares to listen and who cares to know something that the lord laid on my heart that i believe will affect the future of our country nigeria this is a timely message a prophetic message that i believe will give a blueprint towards the next elections in 2023 as we all know nigeria is a great country in africa and next year 2023 will be another year for the general elections and i believe that god is always interested in the government of men the bible says in psalm 75 that he exalts one and he brings down another god is interested because he enthrones and deposes kings and so it is important that we get to know god's opinion god's will as far as these issues are concerned and i believe that this um may not give a complete picture but will add a piece to the entire puzzle so that we can understand what god is saying now and the direction that he's given for us to know those whom he has chosen as our next leaders and i wanted to get this message i wanted to share it around and i call on the entire body of christ in nigeria and nigerians at diaspora to pray it's one thing to know that this is what god is saying it's another thing for us to agree and partner with him in prayers as jesus taught us to pray that his will be done in earth as it is in heaven thank you i would like to start by reading from the word of god um, so that we can get vivid direction first of all i will read psalms 89 and then i'll read also psalms 78 it is important that we always go to the word of god to get the blueprint and the picture of everything that god wants us to know part time the word of god is the more sure word of prophecy and so if i claim to receive a revelation from god it should be lined side by side with god's word as it speaks to the now so psalms 89 verse 20 let's look at the model for the nigeria's next leader nigeria's next president from the word of god psalms 89 from verse 19 to 21 it says then you spoke in a vision to your holy one and said i have given help to one who is mighty i've exalted one chosen from the people i found my servant david with my holy oil i've anointed him with whom my hand shall be established also my arm shall strengthen him and now psalm 78 still another scripture just to bear witness to the first verse 70 to 72 it has this to say he also chose david his servant and took him from the sheepfolds from following the eels that had young he brought him to shepherd Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hand. Now, from both scriptures, we understand that the subject or the character referred to is David. Um, let's try to look at Nigeria from the standpoint of the word of God. Let's look at Nigeria from the storyline that the Bible provides. Nigeria has migrated through several seasons as far as her um, democracy is concerned. We moved from the colonial masters to independence and, and the military rule. The civil war came, the military rule continued, and we had punctuations where civilian governments came up. But in 1999, Nigeria was fully translated into a democratic state 
And from that time, we have had democratic leaders that I believe God has raised to rule his people. And um, if you read the Bible very well, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt into the promised land, they were led by a military leader called Joshua. Small wonder why we had the military rule much in the past after independence, because they needed to conquer the nations in Canaan. So there were many things we needed to conquer as an independent nation. And I know here and there, there might have been flaws with different um, regimes, but um, we can say by and large that there was some level of success recorded. And after Joshua died, God raised judges, people he anointed to fight, you know, for the different tribes in Israel. But after all the judges, then came the leadership of the prophet Samuel. Samuel was anointed by God to lead and to rule God's people as a judge and as a priest and as a prophet. And then Samuel died. We know the story. And then Saul was raised as a leader. And I believe that um, we can line it side by side to say that the last two um, democratic regimes before now, we can safely say that this leader was figurative of Samuel, came from a minority tribe and governed God's people, governed the nation Nigeria for a while, and then had to step down when it was time. Now, when the children of Israel asked for a king for the first time, God had to raise King Saul. The reason why they asked for a king is it's important we have this background they asked for a king because they needed someone to fight their wars and so uh, god gave them a king to help them fight their battles and i believe that in 2015 nigerians were tired of several things like insecurity corruption and the rest and they wanted someone who will fight so god raised a man for them but after king saul david had to come but this time around the bible tells us where we read that god chose him from his people and anointed him now with this background i can begin to give you the various signs so that you could know um, who we are referring to now all through this video series we will not mention any name we are just going to give you the characters as it matches with the biblical characters in scripture. Um, and, and I'll allow you to go do the whole um, puzzle for yourself. God always speaks true wisdom. And uh, it will take those who are of a listening heart to understand what God is saying. But I believe it will bring direction. So, 14 signs. I'll start with the first. You must understand now that Nigerians are in need of a David. God needs to raise a David. So I will be using the character of David concurrently and we can bring out several characteristic features from the life of this man to be able to denote God's preferred candidate for the next presidential elections. Number one, David was a shepherd. That means that we are looking at a leader that will come as a shepherd. Who is a shepherd? A shepherd is a pastor, is a leader, is an overseer. A shepherd is one who takes charge of sheep, who leads them in and out of their house or where they stay, takes them to feed on the grass and brings them back. To be a shepherd, you have to be very patient. Now, I live in the northern part of my country, Nigeria, and so I'm used to seeing the headsmen and the Fulani go up and down with their cattle. So you need to, with, that gives you a picture of how a shepherd is. So Nigerians, uh, the first sign will be he's going to be a shepherd. That means we are looking at somebody who probably has been in leadership capacities before now. A shepherd. In Christendom, a shepherd is a pastor. 
So I guess you can understand what we are talking about. Is one who will have music and a sound of worship in his heart. When David was a shepherd, he led sheep. But the Bible was also careful to make us understand that David was a lover of music, a player of music as well, and a worshiper at heart. Many of the Psalms he wrote in the Bible, he wrote them while he was in the bush or in the wilderness taking care of his father's sheep. And like one of the scriptures we read in Psalm 78, God brought him out of that place. So it means that this leader has been leading somewhere before. Shepherding over God's people. That's sign number one. Sign number two. David was from a tribe of royalty and praise. That means this leader that God is going to give to us or that we are expecting is going to be one that comes from a tribe of royalty and praise. Now, let me, let's look at it this way. Oh, from a tribe of royalty and praise. David was in the Bible from a tribe called Judah. Judah was a tribe of royalty. In Genesis 49, when Jacob was blessing his son, he apportioned the blessing of kingship and governance to Judah. So we are looking at a tribe, possibly, where you will have many kings come from. A tribe that understands royalty. A tribe that has a culture that knows what kingship and regency is all about. And a tribe of praise. Now, we, have, we are blessed in Nigeria with several tribes. And every tribe has their language and, and has their culture of praise, both for kings, for rulers, and even to God. But, however, there is this tribe in Nigeria. I wouldn't mention the particular place, but it's at the south of Nigeria that is known for praise. They know how to make and to pay obeisance to their leaders. They know how to chant songs of praise for their leaders that can get them excited. So, if we are looking for a David in the next elections, this could also be a pointer. We need to trace him to his roots and discover that he's from a tribe of praise and a tribe of royalty. The Lord said to me, just the way David was accepted first by one tribe, the tribe of Judah, you know, he became king over Judah for seven years in 2 Samuel chapter 2, before he finally became king over the entire Israel. So one tribe accepted him first. And this was the tribe of Judah, his tribe. This time around, it may not just be tribe, as in, you know, a dialect or where the person comes from. But let me give you something from the Bible that will help you. Psalms 8 verse 2, the NIV translation, it says, Out of the mouth of babes you have ordained praise. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Babes and sucklings are children. So out of the mouth of children you have ordained praise. And the tribe that accepted David was the tribe of Judah, which means praise, because Judah means praise. That means that this man will first of all be accepted by a sociological group, an age group in our generation that correlates with this scripture I just quoted. Praise. If out of the mouth of children, God has ordained praise, it means that this one will be accepted more by children. Now, it is important that he will be accepted first by children because children are the leaders of tomorrow. Every nation that cares about their children cares about their future and their destiny. All right. So, he is going to be accepted by a group in society, possibly the younger generation. Because they will see him as someone who will come to cure the ills of illiteracy. And someone who will come to better the state of education. Someone who understands and appeals with what that generation um, 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 identifies with. So I will stop here. I will give you two signs. More signs to come in subsequent videos. Number one is going to be a shepherd. He's going to be a leader before now. And then number two, he's going to come from a tribe of royalty 
and of kingship. Let him that has ears hear what the Spirit is saying. God bless you and I'll see you again.